Hey gang, Dave Baker here. And these are some of my favorite short swords featured on Forged in Fire. In close quarters, in tight spaces, often a long weapon is more of a liability than a help. That's why throughout history, different cultures have developed short swords to fight in those tight spaces. This oddly bent weapon is the Sika. Now, the Sika was originally a Thracian weapon, which was based on the agricultural tool, the sickle. The Roman gladiatorial version put the steep bend in it so it could be used to dig in and grab a shield and allow that shield to be pushed out of the way before the attack is made. This double-edged heavy blade was a devastating weapon. Now this beautiful, slightly curved weapon is the Yatagan. The Yatagan was the primary weapon of the Turkish Janissaries. These weapons were in use from the 14th century to the 19th century. The slight curve towards the front makes it a fantastic chopping weapon. Yet the point is developed enough for the thrust. Many of these weapons had ivory handles, inlay, mother of pearl, some of the most decorated weapons from the period. It's a light, fast, extremely mobile weapon. In the hands of a Janissary, it would be terrifying. Now, this deadly blade is the Roman Gladius, one of the most iconic short swords in history. It's the sword of the Roman legions, a sword that lasted 600 years. Until recently, we haven't had many actual pieces that survive. What we've been relying on, of course, are either sculptures or pottery depicting soldiers using this weapon. Now, they're usually depicted with the weapon in the right hand and a large shield or scutum in the left hand. And that follows Roman military doctrine, which usually said that you had to thrust with the blade horizontal. Now, that allowed it to go up under or through armor or between the ribs. The proof of this weapon's effectiveness is shown in the many years it was used by the Roman legions. This is the naval cutlass, designed specifically for naval warfare. Back in the days of the tall ship, the ships were tight with ropes everywhere, cannon. There was very little room to swing a weapon. A long blade would be almost useless. So a weapon was designed specifically for that fight, and that weapon was the cutlass. It had a lot of hand protection. You could deliver blows with the guard. The blade was shortened down so it could be swung in close quarters, either with a hack or used to stab. This cutlass is based on the design which was adapted by the United States military and still issued all the way to World War II. Close quarters, small weapon, but a big punch. They're one of my favorites. This is the Xephos, the Greek warrior's sword. It had this leaf blade with a wasp waist on it, which allowed the weight to be forward for a serious chopping action. It had an acute tip for thrusting. It had a guard that was usually just big enough to protect the hand and a counterbalance to balance all that weight out. These weapons spanned hundreds of years of time on the battlefield and probably influenced a lot of the gladiuses' development. Usually the shield was held in the left hand, the xephos in the right, and often the shield had a cutout. That allowed that deadly piercing point to be used to its best effect, a weapon that truly passed the test of time.
So there you have it, folks, some of my favorite short swords featured on Forged in Fire. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them in a future video.